Welcome to Healthcare Du Jour, where we dish up and digest the latest in healthcare. For the next 30 minutes, sit back as we bring you insight, commentary, and discussion on trending topics to the table, all expertly served up by our host and his guests. Healthcare Du Jour is brought to you by Healthcare Now Radio, part of the Media Answers Network, and is sponsored by the law offices of Myrick O'Connell. Now here's your host, Matt Fisher. Welcome back, and thank you for joining as we dive into the hottest topics in healthcare. I'm your host, Matt Fisher. On the menu today is John Harrison, Chief Commercial Officer at Concord Technologies. Welcome, John. Hey, Matt. Nice to be here. Thanks. So it's it's great to have you on. And what I always like to do before really getting into the main part of the discussion is to allow my guests to provide a little bit more of an introduction in terms of who they are and what they do. So, John, the floor is yours. Oh, thanks, Matt. Um, yeah, uh, my name is John Harrison. I've uh, uh, you know I work for a business called uh, Concord Technologies, um, and I run uh, sort of strategy and um, and commercial efforts um, for the business. Um, and our core business is sort of providing um, electronic and digital fax services into healthcare um, and a variety of solutions that are um, designed to sort of optimize and automate the, the process and handling of faxes. So it's uh, it's been wonderful to be involved in the healthcare business and lovely over the course of the last 10 or 20 years of my life to uh, to see how um, some things have changed and, and some things still stay the same. Yeah, and I, before we really explore kind of the, the evolution that it sounds like you've been able to witness, I'm very curious to know what brought you into healthcare in the first place? You know, honestly, it was a fairly natural evolution of the the business itself, Matt. Um, um, you know, we had started off providing um, general services to a variety of industries, but the uptake and the adoption and the opportunities for improvement in just how fax was being used in healthcare was just so obvious for us um, that we sort of naturally gravitated in that direction over the course of the last decade. You know, I, I'll admit that uh, that prior to that, to us getting started with that, I, I admit that my knowledge of the healthcare space was pretty limited. But as I've gotten into it more and more over the course of the last decade, I, I've found the, the industry to be truly fascinating um, and uh, um, and a really wonderful space to uh, to work in. It, it's it, it kind of as you were saying, you know, getting into healthcare with not too much of a background. Um, what are some of the aspects of the system that surprised you the most? Uh, honestly, it still surprises me today. Um, just quite how fragmented the market is. Um, you know, I think you know many of us today who are in the industry acknowledge the lack of interoperability and sharing of data as, as sort of part of our norm. But uh, but as a patient, I think it, it scares the daylights out of me. You know, it, it's truly remarkable to see how the industry has had to continue to try and evolve and continue to try and band-aid solutions for the lack of uh, open exchange of information and the open exchange of data about patients and for the benefit of care of patients. Um, it's, uh, it's remarkable. Yeah, no, and I think you're kind of phrasing it quite delicately around the interoperability challenges. Uh, and, you know, I would say that, you know, if you kind of look at, um, you know, complaints or uh, statements that, you know, probably mostly anecdotal, you know, there, there can be statements around uh, or pointing to the use of facts as kind of indicia of the fact that it's hard to exchange uh, information. So, you know, I'd like to now kind of like start diving into, you know, the use of facts, because I know you've referenced that a couple of times already. And, um, you know, so maybe if you could just provide a, provide a little bit of a level set in terms of, um, you know, how facts has been and is currently being used within the healthcare system. Uh, sure. I mean, I think the uh, I think the short summary is that it is absolutely pervasive. You know, some data that uh, and some an analysis that we did of the market back in 2018 um, showed that nearly 80 percent of all PHI are exchanged through um, some uh, some form of fax technology. You know, more than 70 percent of uh, acute care hospitals um, still sending um, a summary of care records of fax. More than 76 percent receiving um, summary of care records by fax. I mean, it's just it it 
it is so common that it is is almost um, the default standard for uh, for the exchange of um, of data, uh, exchange of information in healthcare. So, do you have any kind of insights or probably hypotheses in terms of why uh, fax has become so pervasive? Yeah, it's it's a great question and 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 one that uh, that I get asked about quite a lot, Matt. You know, and I think the 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 short summary is that it's easy. Um, it is it is a really low friction method for sending information, particularly for the sender. You know, if you think about the experience of somebody, you know, perhaps in a clinical setting, needing to get information sent to some destination, the process for them is pretty simple. Printing out some documents, putting it in a fax machine, or or just hitting the button on the in their EHR to send it digitally. Um, and that document gets sent. They don't need to worry about any of the any of the underlying technology and how it's delivered and and where it's going. For the recipient, it's obviously a lot a lot more painful because they're receiving this unstructured piece of paper that they're needing to work with. But I, I think that simplicity um, has, has been a, a big impact, and I think the the sort of universal nature of of fax it 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 works all the time. It connects to everybody. Everybody has a fax number, um, and it, be, it it becomes this sort of common denominator for. Uh, for PHI exchange as a result. And actually something you just mentioned there um, made me realize I forgot to ask you a little bit of a, a grounding question. Um, you, I think early on mentioned that there's, you know, kind of different types of fax technology. Um, so would you just be able to give everyone a little bit of a primer in terms of what the different options exist right now? Cause you know, I have a feeling most people think of that old machine that just spits out paper. And frankly, at this point in time, it seems like it's usually uh, spam messages that are <laughs> trying to get you to go on a cruise or um, is trying to sell you something else. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so uh, you could put um, fax technology into into two broad groups. Um, the sort of traditional old fax machine um, is still pervasive, but um, but is really the the least useful method of of sending and managing faxes. Um, on the other hand, there's sort of a general group of digital fax um, transmission and. Um, within that, there's um, sort of fax servers and cloud fax services. In either case, um, you know, in very simple terms, you're thinking about um, a software alternative to the physical hard, uh, the physical fax machine that would sit in your office. So typically, it's something that you're using on your computer, um, and um, you can sort of hit the button, look up in your phone book, something similar to email and, and very simple to to send a document from your uh, computer without having to print it first. Um, and normally in that case, um, with the digital fax systems, faxes that you receive are coming in as a PDF or, or some sort of image um, that you can then look at on your computer, again, without necessarily needing to uh, to print a hard copy of. So there's two groups, the sort of traditional fax machine and, and digital fax. Yeah, and I think that description is helpful because it's, um, you know, I'm, I'm not pri- primarily working in a healthcare organization, but, you know, being at a law firm, uh, you know, the legal industry also still uses fax quite a bit. And I, I actually remember when my firm transitioned to the hard copy to that electronic based system, similar to what you were describing. So, you know, I get the email with the PDF now, if I, if a fax is sent to me and I know that's how we send them out. So it's, you know, I, I think that is helpful. So, you know, everyone can, can get a, hopefully a clearer picture in their mind that it's, you know, you're not just going to see a pile of paper coming in. Um, but you know, there, there is at least a, a basis in technology, um, which you know, kind of suggests that, there has been an evolution of fax technology and it's not something that's static. I'd absolutely agree. Um, there have been um, a significant amount of changes to uh, fax technology. And while I agree with you that a lot of people still um, think about fax as perhaps even the old thermal rolls of paper um, you know, coming out of a, a fax machine in the corner, that's really not what fax is most commonly today. Um, 
And, uh, you know, we, we talk a lot in, in our industry about facts really being a sort of a transmission protocol, um, you know, something that, that should happen in the background that you as a user should never really have to think about. It facts is sort of that, that thing like email, it's just sort of transmitting your document from A to B. In a, when you're using facts in um, with any of the digital technologies, that's a lot closer to the experience that you get. Um, you're sitting at your computer, you need to send a document from A to B, you hit the button, you say, send this to, to, uh, to Dr. Joe, um, and uh, you hit the button and it just happens. Um, it happens all in the background and that, that document gets sent. And when it's complete, you'll get uh, get a little pop up notice to tell you that it's uh, it's completed successfully. So, you know that's a, a huge uh, you know mental shift away from um, you know the the very manual printing of paper and going to the fax machine and sitting and waiting ten minutes while uh, while the paper feeds through. Um, that's you know that that's certainly been the the most significant shift. Um, but what we're seeing today, and much more recently even, are significant shifts in um, the processing of faxes when they come into an organization. Um, we can talk about this uh, when we have some time. But um, you know there there are technologies that are being used today where where we're using things like artificial intelligence to automatically read faxes that are coming into a business to automatically identify who the patient is and what the documents are about and where they need to go so that we can automatically put that document in the correct patient record and extract all the right pieces of information from the fax and populate the the record in the EHR automatically so that somebody not having to do that manually. Um, and that documents and faxes and transmissions are being automatically triaged in the business and routed to the right place um, without somebody having to manually intervene. And these are all developments that have come out of the fax-related industry just over the last three or four years and have been facilitated through the advancement of, of um, much broader AI and image recognition technologies. So actually, that is um, really fin- fascinating to hear. And, and I would like to, you know, kind of dive into that some more, um, you know, because at least when you're kind of looking around and seeing the, the general, maybe call them throwaway complaints about fax is that, you know, even if it does come in electronically, I think, as you said before, it could just come in as a PDF and, that doesn't, that's not a dynamic thing that you can interact with. Uh, so, you know, if you, if you could provide a bit more of a background in terms of how AI and other sounds like software or, um, you know, technology developments have been able to help advance to make the receipt of the document uh, a bit more interactive and, and useful, again, for the recipient. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's such a um, it's a, a large and really fascinating um, topic. And um, what I, uh, if you're okay, I, what I'd like to do is just to to sort of start off, sort of describing how we view the sort of maturation of the the use of facts. A lot of the time, when we working when we're working with um, new customers, hospitals, or practices, or insurance uh, companies. You know, we, we do an assessment of where their use of facts is in terms of um, uh, a maturation scale, um, starting off with sort of absolute ground zero, just using uh, uh, traditional fax machines. Um, and the step up to, to level one is the transition to digital. That's a significant evolution right there. But even once you've gotten to digital, um, you open up this enormous landscape of opportunity for automation. Um, And from there, we sort of move up to um, sort of level two of maturation where we're automating the transmission of documents and faxes, um, the sending of faxes directly from inside and things like the EMR, you know, without somebody having to interact with another piece of software. And up to level three, um, we're starting to do that for inbound documents so that the inbound PDF are automatically appearing in the EMR rather than in some other piece of software. 
and up to level four starting to apply AI to automatically recognize the document type, automatically recognize the priority of the document, automatically identify all the patient data um, and be able to use that information to triage the document, to route the document to the right location, perhaps index the document automatically into the correct patient record in the EMR. Um, and then up to level five, um, where we're now starting to look at understanding the business processes that are, are being driven by these facts-based communications and understanding how we can optimize and improve that entire business process. So think about an organization that's relying on inbound faxes for patient intake maybe uh, maybe an lt pack facility that's uh, that, that's looking to admit a patient a fax is coming into the organization they're needing to do a review do an assessment of whether that patient's a good fit for their facility get back to the referring practice um, and um, and then facilitate the 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 transition of of care for that uh, for that patient that uh, that entire process is uh, hugely time critical, um, both from a revenue perspective um, for the LT pack facility, but also from a patient care perspective. And so, being able to use some of these technologies in a um, one you know once fax is digital, we can start understanding how that document's being worked, who's working on things quickly, where are things getting delayed, and making sure that we're eking out any of those areas of inefficiency so that we can reduce the overall time to admit that patient to the uh, to the correct facility. And that, so that we consider the most mature level of automation where we're understanding how the documents are being interacted with. And, and that is a lot to be able to unpack. Um, and for those of you just joining, I'm talking with John Harrison from Concord Technologies. And we've been talking about kind of the history and evolution of facts and healthcare. Now getting into you know how it can actually be become a, you know, a very essential tool for uh, becoming a bit more automated and in, in helping to get data into the right places. So John, kind of with the, those five levels that you were just describing, hopefully most places are at level, you know, in, into level two at a minimum, which I think you had described as you've got the, the electronic or the digital version of facts and that if I'm, and hopefully I'm going to be getting each stage right, but at, at stage three, it sounded like that's where you can start introducing um, some of the automation and analysis. So kind of, I guess the, the first piece to, to dive into is where do you see the current spread of organizations that you're working with? You know, how many are into stage three or higher or, and how many are, are kind of on the cusp of, or just waiting um, to be able to introduce some more of the, the technology based tools that can help introduce automation? Matt, unfortunately, the answer to that is a little disappointing. You know, there's, um, um, you know, again, some analysis that we ran in the market um, fairly recently, just uh, just early uh, in 2019, showed that um, even in a hospital setting, there were 55% of the hospitals that, uh, that we uh, reviewed that were still at stage zero. Um, still using primarily fa traditional fax machines. In the LT pack space, for example, that number is dramatically higher. Um, nearly 75% of LT pack facilities are still at stage zero. Now, once I think, um, you know, as you look at organizations that have begun the digital transformation process, um, organizations tend to move through um, the remaining levels of maturation fairly quickly because the advantages of the faxes being in a digital format, it, A, it's fairly easy to make that shift. It delivers a ton of value and it it's just becomes a really logical thing. People's eyes open up to, wow, this is this is so much better than we were doing before. What else can we do? How else can we improve this? So once you're into the the digital transformation, you know, as you look at organizations that have begun digital transformation for fax transmissions, I would say that close on 40% of them are at level three. A much smaller number have transitioned to the use of AI, uh, of artificial intelligence to begin to automatically analyze the documents. That technology is fairly new. Um, 
and is really um, emerging in the market over the course of the last you know 18 to 24 months. So that's something we'll see a lot more adoption of um, over the course of the next few years. But you know, I uh, if you don't mind, uh, I, I like to tell just a very quick story just about that transition from from traditional fax machines to digital fax. Um, we worked with a with a practice some years ago. And the physician was telling us a, a story about what drove them to make that transition from paper to digital fax. And they were referring to, um, to, to somebody else that they knew in the industry, not inside their own practice, but somebody else that they, that they were aware of, um, where a patient had come into the practice, um, looking for a, um, a breast exam after, you know, being nervous of, uh, of, um, some anomaly. Had gone in, got um, had a review. They'd send her out for um, uh, for um, some imaging work, um, and essentially left it as you know, if there's any anything concerning, we'll uh, we'll reach back out to you. Well, of course, some tests came back from imaging with some very bad news, um, and and that uh, that information was returned to the referring physician by fax. The fax was misplaced, um, not routed correctly to the uh, to the physician. Never made it into the patient's chart. The patient never got a call back, um, and sadly passed away um, from uh, from breast cancer uh, a year and a half later. And so there, you've got this this very very real impact of you know an, an enormously tragic event that happened as a result of um, an administrative failure. That, that happened as a result of this reliance on paper. Um, and the mere transition from paper-based systems to digital enables us to stop those things happening. There's uh, a much higher degree of accountability. Paper, you know, digital records don't just go missing. Um, and, um, and so there's, uh, um, there's, there's an enormous amount of you know, risk reduction, patient care improvement, op, you know, business optimization that's achieved just through that that very, very first step. And I know I keep bouncing around a little bit, and I'm sorry for that, Matt, just sort of talking about that initial sort of ground level transition from basic fax services to digital fax. But really, for me, everything that we've seen in the industry shows us that that that's the most important step to take. Once you've made that step forward to digital facts, the world opens up in terms of, of what else is available for uh, the automation of workflows and, uh, and everything else. And then you can start applying all these great, um, you know, wonderful new technologies for taking a lot of the human interaction, a lot of the human overhead, um, and a lot of the pain out of dealing with faxes. Um, for uh, for the organization, but you've got yeah. to take that first step. Yeah, and kind of given the, kind of the, the expansiveness that can open up by taking that first step, and contrasting that with you know some of the the figures that you gave based on, I think you said the analysis you did in early two thousand nineteen. You know, kind of what do you see as the perceived barriers from being able to take that first step? They're they're mostly human, um, to be honest. Um, it's um, it's a behavior shift. Um, the technology for adopting um, digital fax services are pervasive. They're available from many different vendors. Um, there are a variety of different flavors available as to whether you want to run things yourself and run your own software or just buy an online service, um, more similar to what, what my company does. But they're pretty easy to get started with. I think really the, um, the hesitation is mostly familiarity and people's um, awareness um, of the benefits that can be gained through the evolution away from paper. Um, and I think a lot of folks, uh, a lot of folks struggle with that separation away from a very uh, tactile interaction in a paper-based transmission to something that happens um, digitally. Yeah, that that is uh, very interesting to hear. And you know, I, I can't believe it, we're already starting to get close to the end of our time. So I'd kind of like to kind of shift to the end of the spectrum, which is, you know, the, the full, the full use. And, you know, as you were talking about the, the ability to have AI or, you know, 
maybe machine learning based solutions helping to interpret and, and route the information from an incoming fax to the right place. So kind of where do those tools stand in terms of the development cycle and it, and also in availability, because I think you were talking about that it, um, overall it sounded like it was still relatively new, um, kind of really, I think you were saying hitting the ability for acquisition within the past, um, I think you said 18 to 24 months. Yeah, that's correct. The technology is certainly fairly new still, Matt. Um, and, um, you know, we're definitely seeing strong uptake from um, from larger um, health systems, larger hospitals, and on the payer side. Um, and our expectation is that that technology will trickle down into smaller facilities um, over the course of the next 12 to 18 months. Um, in terms of the state of the technology today, um, you know, the technology is absolutely able to automatically identify document types, differentiate prioritization of documents based on the information that's contained in them, automatically identify and extract all the patient data, um, things like referring physicians. But um, most typically, um, the technology is, is aimed at extracting a few pieces of key information off the document. So perhaps, you know, 10 or 15 fields or components of information on a particular document. What we, what we expect to see happen over the course of the, the coming few years as the technology continues to mature is that it will begin to extract more and more and more of the content um, that is contained in the document um, and be able to automatically trans, uh, transform a lot of the data that's bound up in this um, in this document format, automatically transform that into, into a, a digital record. You know, we, uh, we, we almost, you know, we, we see a future not far out where, um, facts may actually provide a lowest common denominator form of interoperability. Um, and, you know, if we're able to exchange documents easily and fluidly between different practices, um, and different organizations, and then automatically change that document and automatically trans, uh, transform that document that's received into a digital record that makes sense for the receiver. We're, we're moving closer to, to some form of interoperability that makes sense. Now, I'm not saying that, that this is a perfect end-to-end -end solution for the healthcare industry at all. Uh, I don't believe that one for one moment. But I do think that um, as... Um, transmissions of information need to still be done in a document format for some reason or another. These technologies can take an enormous amount of the pain um, out of handling those documents and deliver a much, much smoother interaction and a much smoother transition of data for, uh, for both sender and receiver. Yeah, no, and I think that it's a lot to consider and kind of as you're suggesting could even be a little bit of, you know, an interim step as the, the industry continues to develop the means of very effectively being able to <laughs> share and have data interact. But believe it or not, we are already out of time. Uh, I want to thank my guest, John Harrison, for a great conversation today. Well, thanks, Matt. It was, uh, it was really fun to be here. And thank you to everyone listening. Keep the dialogue going and connect with me at hashtag H-C-D-E-J-U-R-E. -E. I'm Matt Fisher. Until next time.